Hello, this is Keith Johnson, and in this help movie, I'll be giving you a very brief overview of what the options software can do for you and your school. When you open up options, it shows you this screen with one, two, three, up to seven steps across the screen, and basically what you do is just follow those steps across the screen, starting with step one, looking at populations. So here you can see there are already two populations set up, one for year 12 of those sixth for students aged 16, 17, and then there's a separate population for students aged 13 or 14, which is one we recommend that you use if you decide to download the free tutorial version. And you can set up other populations for other students in your school, and you can specify how many choices they're allowed to have, whether they should be allowed to choose a reserved choice, and what you want to name the blocks. So that's basically all to step one. Step two, you enter the subjects that the students are going to be offered. You can give them a colour to make it easier to identify on later screens. I think specify the minimum group size and the maximum group size, and in fact how many groups you're prepared to offer, how many groups you can afford to staff, although again options will advise you on this at a later stage. So that's the second step. The third step is to enter the students and their choices, the students' names and their choices. And there are three ways to do this, which are explained here. One way is to enter them manually. Not many people do that these days. The second way is to load it in from a file, an Excel file or a CSV file. But you can get that file from your admin system, your MIS. And that's the usual way that people now enter students' names. Their choices you can enter from an Excel file if you want to. Or you can type them in if you collect the option choices on paper. Or, more and more these days, people are using this tools method, which allows the students and their parents to enter their choices over the internet from home. So the students and parents can enter their choices on their iPad or their laptop at home. But any one of those ways allows you to enter the students' names and their choices, which is step three. Step four is look at a clash table. More details about that in the tutorial and what it will tell you. And then step five and step six is to actually design a pattern and, if necessary, to manipulate it. And you can design a pattern either yourself manually by deciding what you want to put into option block A, block B and block C and so on. Or you can click the auto create button and just let options program create it for you while you go and drink a cup of coffee. Or you can mix the two methods together. You might want to seed a pattern by putting a few things in manually and letting AutoCreate finish it off. Whichever method you use, and these are explained in the tutorial, you end up with a pattern, current pattern, which looks something like this. Here in block A, there's also block B, block C, and block D. In block A, there's a graphics group, an art group, a geography group, a Spanish group, and a German group and uh, the students have been assigned to those groups by options and if you want to see who's actually in the graphics group here you click on the assign button and it shows you that those students Patrick Horn, Laura Howarth and so on are in that group and if you want to see who's missing who can't be fitted in that group then you click on there you click on missing and you see Joanna Wilde has not got the graphics she asked for she's got a first choice French, she's got a second choice geography she's got a third choice PE but she hasn't got graphics because she hasn't chosen a subject in block C. So you either have to counsel John Wild, or else you might want to manipulate the pattern or let auto create to manipulate the pattern to see whether you can find a different pattern where she could get all her choices. And there are lots of tools to help you. There's all about tools along here. Shuffle, bunch, equal and split and so on. And these are explained by clicking on the help button or by working your way through the free tutorial version. Lots of things to fine tune it there. At the moment the choice satisfaction is 99%, but obviously the target is 100%. And then final step is printouts. The number of printouts you can get, probably the two most common ones are to produce a mail merge letter, which you can then send to the parents to tell them what choices their students have got. And the group list here, which will allow you to print out for the teachers who's going to be in the teaching group, so that they know who's going to join their group when term starts. So that's a very brief overview of the seven steps in options. If you'd like to know more about it and how it can save your time in your school, then the best thing to do is to download the free tutorial version. It comes with a PDF, and if you print out the PDF, it takes you on a step-by-step -step motorway route through the program, showing you more details of each of those steps, and in particular the crucial steps of step five and step six. So download the free tutorial if you like more information or click to see more information about the tools online system for collecting choices over the internet. Thanks. Bye bye.